Hi boys and girls. So this is crazy. Um, the next two weeks or two weeks and two days, we will not be having school um, just because of everything that's been going on in the country. And I know that we've talked a little bit about it in class and how that this is something that you don't need to be scared of. And it is getting serious and we do need to take care of ourselves and stay healthy to protect not only ourselves but those people we love. I still don't want you guys to be anxious or scared. You know, this is something different. This is something I never thought that we would have to do as a class together, but just know that I'm gonna try my best to make these next two weeks as fun as possible as we can um, via my YouTube channel. I have a couple of new tech, tool, tech tools that I want to try out for us all to use where we can talk to each other and you know, share awesome knowledge that we're learning and learn new lessons with our computers and phones. So I just kind of wanted to just tell you guys that, that I am going to miss you like crazy. I cannot believe I'm not going to see your sweet little faces for two weeks, but just know that I am here. If you need me, tell mom or dad to reach out to me on the Remind app or to email me. And if you need anything, just let me know. So you know when Miss Oz feels sad or even when I feel happy, I always want to read. So reading always makes me feel better. So I thought I would read today The Legend of the Blue Bonnet. And we have read this before, um, I think on dismissal time when we watch read alouds on YouTube. I think we've read it before there, but I don't think I've actually read it to you guys. But the illustrations look very similar to another Tommy De Paula book. Can you guess which book it is? It is The Indian Paintbrush. So if you guessed that, you are right. So today we're going to be reading The Legend of the Blue Bonnet. So let's go ahead and find out what it's all about. Great spirits, the land is thine, and your people are dying too. The long line of dancers say, tell us what we have done to anger you. In this drought, save your people. Tell us what we must do so that you will send back the rain that will bring back life. For three days, the dancers danced to the sound of the drums, and for three days, the people called Comache and watched and waited. And even though the hard winter was over, no healing rains came. It kind of sounds like now, like we're a little uncertain right now, but you know, let's find out what happens. Um, drought and famine are hardest. On the young, on the very young and the very old. Among the few children left was a small girl named she who was alone. She sat by herself watching the dancers. In her lap was a doll made of buckskin, a warrior doll. The eyes, nose, and mouth were painted on with the juice of berries. It wore beaded leggings and a belt of polished bone. On its head were blue feathers from a bird who cries, J, 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 J. And she loved her doll very much. Soon, she who was alone said to her doll, the shaman will go off alone to the top of the hill to listen for the words of the great spirits. Then we will know what to do, so that once more the rains will come to the earth and will be green and alive, and the buffalo will be plentiful, and the people will be rich again. As she talked, she thought of the mother who made the doll, and of the fathers who brought the blue feathers. She thought of the grandfather and the grandmother she had never known. They were all like shadows. It seemed so long ago that they had died from a famine. The people had named her and cared for her. The warrior doll was the only thing she had left of those distant days. There's Sophie. The sun is setting, the runner called as he ran to the camp. The shaman is returning. The people circled in a great circle as the shaman spoke. I have heard the words of the great spirits, he said, for the people have become selfish. For years they have taken from the earth without giving anything back. The great spirits say that people must sacrifice. We must make a burnt offering of the most valued possessions among them. The ashes of this offering shall be scattered to the four points of the earth. The home winds, when the sacrifice is made, the drought and famine will cease. Life will be restored to the earth and to the people. The people sang a song of thanks to the great spirits to tell them what they must do. I'm not sure, or I'm sure it is not my new bow the great spirits want, a warrior said, or my special blanket, a woman added. As everyone went into their teepees to talk and think over what the great spirits had asked. Everyone this except she who is alone. She held her doll tightly to her heart. You, she said, looking at the doll, you are my most valued possession. It is you that the great spirits want. And she knew what she had to do. 
As the council fires died out and the teepee flaps began to close, the small girl returned to the teepee, where she slept to wait. The night outside was still except for the distant sound of the night bird in the, with the red wings. Soon everyone in the teepee was asleep, except she who was alone. Under the ashes of the teepee fire, one stick still glowed. She took it and She ran to the place on the hill where the great spirits had spoken to the shaman. Stars filled the sky, but there was no moon. Oh, great spirits, she who was alone said, here is my warrior doll. It is the only thing I have from my family who died in this famine. It is my most valued possession. Please accept it. Then gathering twigs, she started a fire with a glowing fire stick. The small girl watched as the twigs began to catch and burn. She thought of her grandmother and grandfather, her mother and father, and all the people, their suffering and their hunger. Before she could change her mind, she thrust the doll into the fire. She watched until the flames died down and the ashes had grown cold. Then, scooping up a handful, she who was alone scattered the ashes to the home of the wind, the north and the east, the south and the west. And there she fell asleep until the first light of morning sun woke her. She looked out over the hill, and the stretching out from all sides, where the ashes had fallen and the ground was covered with flowers, few flowers, as blue as the feathers of the hair on her doll, as blue as the feathers of the bird who cries, J, J, J. When the people came out of their teepees, they could scarcely believe their eyes. They gathered on the hill with she who was alone, and to look at the miraculous sight. There was no doubt about it. The flowers were a sign of forgiveness from the great spirit. As the people sang, they danced their thanks to the great spirits. A warm rain began to fall, and the land began to live again. From this day on, the little girl was known by another name, one who was loved dearly by her people. And every spring, the great spirits remember the sacrifice of the little girl and, the fills and, and fill the hills and valleys of the land, now called Texas, with beautiful blue flowers, even to this very day. So I wanted to read this story, not only because I love Tommy de Paula, but it talks about, you know, a hard time for people and how, you know, they didn't have rain so that people were going hungry and her people were struggling with that. But by remaining kind and true to herself and selfless, she, or she who is alone, who now she is loved dearly by her people because her name has changed, by remaining selfless and remaining kind and helping others, she was able to overcome that. So I want you guys to remember that even though that this is a difficult time, that, you know, we can overcome this by being all together and remaining kind to one another. So I love you all so, so, so much. I will be posting a video tomorrow reading another book, and I will put some questions in the description box below for you to answer tomorrow about the book that we're going to read. So I miss you all tremendously, and two weeks is going to fly by. Love you guys.